Hi, I'm Chris from CodeReviewVideos.com and in this video we're continuing on with our Symphony 4 exploration. So towards the end of the previous video, we'd added in some functionality to be able to pull out query parameters directly inside our Twig template. This was our first start towards making our Hello page a little bit more dynamic. And I mentioned that whilst it was nice to see how we could do that, the reality of it is you probably wouldn't do it that way. And there may even be some security concerns in just blindly accepting user input via the query parameter like that. It's one of the things that's nice to see, but in the real world, it's not that useful. So let's see how we can use a custom controller method to replicate and then enhance the functionality that we've seen so far. So I'm gonna jump back into my project and I'm gonna go into the roots. So under config roots, and I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this hello page root. Of course, this momentarily breaks our slash hello page. So let's go ahead and fix that. Now we can fix that by defining a new method inside our welcome controller, or we could go ahead and define an entirely new controller just for this method. The choice is entirely up to you. I'm gonna create a new public function. I'm just gonna call it hello. You can of course call it anything that you'd like. And I'm gonna define a routing annotation. So at root and our path is going to be hello page. And the name is going to be hello underscore page, making sure to add in the closing bracket. I just want to double check inside our base that that was the path that we used. And that's good because we've deleted our YAML route, but we've recreated it using routing annotations. And because the name matches up, from Symphony's point of view, there really should be no difference. And just to finish off, we'll render out what we already had, which is this render our hello page, which currently lives inside the root of our templates directory. And we don't need to pass anything in. And so we should be able to go back here and we've, we've changed it. It's not slash hello anymore it's now slash hello page but generally things are all behaving and if we and if we make a mess of the query parameter it just falls back to the default so we're going to change our hello page template now we're going to get rid of all of this and instead let's create a new div and we'll just say my lovely variable and then we'll pass in some variable so we'll just say some variable now given that i've used the name some variable it stands that i need to pass in a variable of the name some variable from whatever's going to be rendering this template. So in other words, I need to go into our welcome controller and I need to pass something in. So let's just see what happens if we don't. Oh, it blows up, that's not good. So it says variable, some variable does not exist. Now we don't need to pass in some variable, which is sounds a bit strange, but we did actually see a solution to this in the previous video. We could just set a default. So we'll just say our default is the variable wasn't set. And then we can refresh that. And even though we didn't pass in some variable, it can fall back nicely to the default. This is really only a visual fix though. We haven't really solved the problem, but fortunately doing so is really quite straightforward. So back inside our welcome controller, our second argument to the render method call, I'm just gonna put this on, on multiple lines. You, you don't need to do this. I just think visually, I think this looks a little bit nicer, but of course your mileage may vary. And inside our hello page, we have the variable name, some variable, that's the one that's expected. So we need to define one here of the very same name, some variable, and it can be anything you like. Could be an integer, Boolean, whatever. The important thing is the variable name. Okay, so now that we've got one set, it passes through with our issue. So in effect, anything that's set as our second parameter to a call to render is our big bag of parameters. It can be an empty array, it can be an array with some expected or mandatory parameters. It can even be one with, say, not used param. Um, maybe we'll just say false. It doesn't matter. We're not going to use that. But because we've defined it, it doesn't mean that anything's going to go wrong. It's just not going to be used. Again, let's we'll give our page a refresh to double check that. Of course, you don't really want to be passing in stuff that you're not using. I'm just trying to illustrate the point that that bag of parameters can contain anything. It's just an array. But let's repeat what we had. So before we had this hello page, and via the query parameters, we were passing in the name of the person. So we'll just say, have a new paragraph and we'll just say, hello, name. Okay, so we need to do stuff inside our controller to make this work. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that bit. I'm just gonna set up a name and we need to pass something in. So if we could immediately hard code it just to validate that it works, looking good. We don't need the query parameter set at this point. So I'm just gonna remove that and it should all still work. Now, in order to reproduce what we had, which was to get this via the app, dot request dot query dot get and then the name but well, we can get direct access to the request object from our controller method so from http foundation i'm going to get the request this is just handled via symphony's dependency injection and so we can say 
The person's name is going to be from the request. We're going to have those query parameters and we're going to get the name. So now rather than hard coding the name to be Chris, let's just pass in the name. Okay, so we refresh that and again, we've fallen back. It's not quite working because we don't have that default set. So we'll just set this time a name to be Chris and it's working. So what if we don't have a valid name passed in on our query parameters? Well, we can either do that from Twig or the second parameter here could be a default. So we'll just say code review videos. So if one isn't set, then we fall back. In that case, it was set. This time we'll set, we'll just send in the request without it being set and this time it, it is set. So again, as I've said a few times in this series, there are multiple ways in which we can do this. You could either do it from the template layer or you can do it from your controller layer. And where it, where you do that is really dependent on your code. And part of the sort of the, the mind bending thing when you're first playing around with Symfony or really any new framework is that you may not be sure on which is the right option to take. My advice to you is don't overthink it. Just do something get it working and then if needs be come back and change it once you've learned a little bit more. It's better to have something that's working but not quite right than something that doesn't work but you want it to be perfect. There's actually tons of stuff that's available on the Symphony's request object. It's given me a bit of a bit of a warning there because I've not got the right doc block set up. So I, yeah I've got a plug in there just alt and return over request and it sets it all up for me. Anyway we can have a look inside the request and again Worth having a look in here, there's all these different things, all these public properties such as the request, uh, which is a little bit strange when you do request and then get the request, but the request is the post parameters and then request query like what we've done are the get parameters, so anything after the question mark in the URL and so on, the files and whatnot. And you shouldn't need most of these things on a sort of a day-to-day -day basis, but knowing that they're there is really useful. So I would advise that you just have a little bit of a play around and have a look at what's in there. You might not fully understand it all up front, but it is useful to have at least seen it so that, you know, in the future when you need something, your memory might just be jogged that little bit. Now we could do a little bit of an optimization here. You don't need this local variable. It's actually redundant. We could just take that bit, drop that in, making sure to take off the, the closing semicolon. And that should all still work as well. And again, maybe if we pop in a name here, all looking good. Now, one thing that I said towards the end of the previous video is that taking information provided directly from like the query parameters like this may be sounding alarm bells to you. In a real application, you would want to validate any provided input. And we could either add this logic into our controller method, or we could use functionality provided to us out of the box by Symfony's routing annotations for this one. So, so far we've been using query parameters, but it not only looks a bit nicer, but also offers us some extra functionality if we make use of routing placeholders. So a routing placeholder in this case would be something like this. And what that would mean is instead of having the URL like it is currently, you may have something like this. Now the error that you're seeing here is actually interesting. It's not directly related immediately to what we've just done. It's because Twig is trying to figure out how to come up with a default parameter for this placeholder. We're going to address that in a sec. I just wanted to really show you the URL, the sort of structure that we're going for. So let's first satisfy Twig. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a new variable here called name, and I'll just set this to be Chris. It shouldn't really matter, but that should be good enough for our default. I'm not going to go ahead and update the doc block just yet. If we refresh that now, okay, it's happy. It accepts the URL. It's not passing through, but that's okay. We're about to fix that. So again, to be absolutely clear why this is happening is if we look back inside our base, we have this route to the path of hello page, but we don't pass in what the name should be there. So we've just gone back into our welcome controller and we've set up this route slash hello page slash name where name is now mandatory, but the path function inside our base HTML twig can't figure out how to correctly make that route because it doesn't know what the, the parameter should be. So there are, again, multiple ways around this and we're not trying to address that specific problem. We're just trying to fix that enough to get us that little bit further at the moment. Now, next, we don't need the direct access to the request anymore because we're going to be getting it from the placeholder. So I'm going to get rid of that and I'm just going to get rid of this for the moment also and I can just set that to be name again. Now, in doing that, we should be good. Well, we should be good strange let's give it a refresh work the second time well, let's continue looking at our annotation so we've got this hello page name and then we're setting the default here well again 
There are multiple ways of doing this. Maybe we want to set this at the annotation level. So we'll just say a key of defaults and we'll set the name default equal to codereviewvideos.com. Now again, we've already got one set. So that's what's used. And now if we take this off, we fall back to hello codereviewvideos.com. But what happens if we try and visit it with a slash on the end? Now that doesn't work. Now, if this is a problem to you, and it may be, it may not be, but have a look in the show notes to this video where I have a potential solution to this. But I just wanted to show you that sometimes, you know, there isn't actually a happy path always, and you do have to do an extra little bit of work. Now the solution to that is not that bad. It's quite a bit of copy paste, but yeah, out of the box, that may not be where you're expecting to be. Okay, so what about if we have Chris and then that, Maybe we don't want anything like that. I was just saying a little bit ago about how maybe accepting direct information via the URL is not that wise of an idea. Maybe we don't want any spaces in there. Maybe names shouldn't contain numbers. Unfortunately, Symphony also has us covered here. So by using the routing annotation like this, and I'm just going to drop it down over multiple lines. There's no downside to doing this. Just purely for visuals, just tidy that up a bit. And then the one last one that I'm going to add in is the requirements. And here we can define a regular expression that says exactly what characters we will allow. So I'm going to say, I only want anything A to Z uppercase or A to Z lowercase one or more times. And I appreciate regular expressions are a tricky subject. There's a link to a tool in the show notes called regexer, which I use quite a lot when working with regular expressions. But the other thing that I will say is that generally the ones, the, the regular expressions that you will use are fairly frequent and common. So finding like an example via Stack Overflow is usually just a bit of a Google away. But what this will now do is if we try and send this in, it says there's no root found. And that's because we don't meet the root requirements anymore because we've got a space in there, because we've got numbers in there. So for example, if we take off the numbers, but we've still got the space. Well, that's still not an allowable character in the list of A to Z, upper or lower case. So it can be a little bit unintuitive, that one, because the root should match sort of in your head, but you've made the match a lot stricter. Okay, and just to confirm, it all still works if you do meet the routing requirements. So we've covered quite a lot there in terms of twig and routing. And in the next video, we're going to take it a bit further and start looking at forms.